Welcome to The Randy Show. I am Brian Thompson, and with me, as always, is James Randy. Randy, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's a good day for me. It's nice and sunny outside, and the swimming pool is beckoning. Oh, nice. <laughs> the swimming pool is beckoning. It's what? It's the beginning of January. Yes, it's, it's difficult to see, but I can see it from here. It's doing a little <laughs> thing like this. <laughs> yeah, I, f I feel like it's a good time to go swimming in the winter because you avoid the crowds. Yeah, well, I've been in Florida, remember? We don't have winter. Oh, right, right, right. We, we've heard of it. It's, it's for a different latitude, I believe. Well, we've got some serious issues to deal with today, unfortunately. Okay. There is a doctor in Texas who's offering some experimental cancer treatment that uh, we suspect may not be entirely on the up and up. And uh, towards the end of this episode, we'll talk more about that man. But first, I wanted to talk to you about your experience going through cancer treatment and about your experience as a skeptic and some of the people that you've encountered who prey upon uh, those people who have cancer and might be looking for some sort of miracle cure that doesn't actually work. I had colon cancer, and uh, it had... Uh and spread to other parts of my body as well, uh, at lymph glands, and uh, the first scan was not satisfactory at all. It showed that it was present in seven or eight different spots of my body. But they just gave me the chemotherapy uh, treatment, which really means that they, they inject you with really deadly chemicals, one of which I turned out to be allergic to, and they had to discontinue it but they substituted uh, other varieties of it. Uh, this um, is really deadly to cancer cells and doesn't do the rest of you any good either. Uh, it took me six months. Uh, pardon me. That was, I believe that was only three months. I'm sorry. Uh, only three months of cancer therapy, that of chemotherapy, pardon me. And uh, there was no radiation involved in my treatment. It was just simply chemotherapy. I would go in every two weeks and have a, a, a bag over my shoulder and it would be feeding a little little tube right here. It's embedded in my chest. I don't want to show you all the details. Uh, and um, that, that would work. It would take two days for it to be thoroughly invested in my body. Then I'd go back in a, two weeks after that and get a second dose of it, a second intake uh, of it. And frankly, uh, Brian, I didn't have any problem whatsoever with this. The little poke I got in the chest every two weeks was nothing. It was a little tiny needle, about so big. They call it a butterfly needle because they say it's used to vaccinate butterflies, which is a blatant lie. They don't do that for butterflies, you see. But it's, uh, if you had to vaccinate a butterfly, it would be small enough for that. And uh, that's simply injected uh, into the port that I have in my chest here under the skin. And uh, it, it goes directly into my bloodstream and uh, it's pretty damn good. I mean, medical science is really remarkable. Not perfect. Oh, no. Not at all. Not perfect. And they never claim that it's perfect. But they do say they have quite adequate treatment for the kind of thing that I had. First of all, I had uh, the bit of my intestine looped and pulled out of my body through three incisions in my body. No, no, pardon me, two incisions in my body. One for a camera and the other one uh, for the actual instrument. And uh, that consisted of uh, uh, a loop of glass fiber. And uh, they had already been uh, into, my, uh, into my colon, pardon these intimate details, but uh, they had inspected it visually and found out that I had two spots in there and uh, they marked them with a black dye and then all they did was go in afterwards and look around the colon and find the black dye and loop it out of my body like a loop like this and then snip it off with the, the two little cancer things there and sew it together and tuck it back into my body. I was unconscious for all this. Of course, I suspect that they hummed or sang tunes or something like that or exchanged jokes uh, not at my expense, I would hope, because I'm helpless on the table, you see. But they, they did do this. They tucked it back, and I now have a basic problem. I think I've described it uh, on one of our podcasts before, that when I go to contemplate my navel, I don't know which one to contemplate because i got three of them now, you see, the, the real one 
and then the camera one, and then the instrument one. And uh, but I'm not complaining. I I give each of the three little dimples on my tummy. I give them all a sufficient amount of attention. Yeah, which is yeah. three times dollars. the fun. <laughs> Well, it takes your attention. It takes more time out of your day to speak to each one of them. But I, I'm, I'm figuring I will, I will get a tattoo or something on it with a little arrow pointing this way. You see. Well, but there are I, a lot of people though who have it uh, far worse than that. Who go through some some pretty, pretty rigorous and uh, debilitating oh, yes. cancer treatments. As oh, yes. as you're well aware, I think as most people are well aware. I think most people, if they haven't gone through it themselves, they know somebody who has gone oh, yes. through that sort of thing. Most people do. Most people do. Whenever I I tell anybody about it or they ask about it, I think I'm able to give them quite a, an elaborate rundown if they really want one. But I had a very easy time of it. I, I must admit that um, it would have cost me a fortune had I had to pay for it. But uh, again, my medical insurance is is quite sufficient to cover it. And uh, the uh, the the beautiful thing is that the day that I checked in for my first. Uh, uh, chemical treatment, um, they released a new uh, substance, a new pharmaceutical called EMEND, E M E N D, and uh, it's very expensive, $320 a tablet, I think it was, and I had to take three of them each time I went in for the infusion every two weeks. But again, I didn't have to pay full price for that, just a, a very small fee. But most people, and this, this is what angers me now and concerns me. Most people in that ward where I was being infused were little old ladies and some little old men like me. And uh, they could not afford the e -mand. And I could. And that's not right. They had to go through the nausea that accompanies chemotherapy and I had to help some of them through it. And I sat around and I went there for many hours every week uh, while I was doing the chemo thing, just to sit with little old ladies and tell them jokes and maybe do a couple of corny magic tricks for them, but just to hold their hands and uh, say hello to them. <laughs> every time I'd leave, I'd hear a little lady lean over to them and say, who is that man with the white beard? They couldn't quite figure me out. <laughs> Which is all well and good. But I got a great deal of, um, yes, I can say it, I got a great deal of joy out of it and satisfaction knowing that I had perhaps added to the to the, uh, the elevated spirit of the cancer ward there. And then maybe I'd help these people to uh, to withstand the discomfort and the, the uh, nausea that they suffered. And these were little old ladies who came by taxi and then called for a taxi again after the two-hour infusion was finished and went back by taxi. People who had nothing, nobody to support them, and I had everybody I could imagine. I lined up outside the hospital and people wanted to help me do something or other, and I, I didn't need their help, and I thanked them very much for it. But I was well looked after, uh, not only by the hospital and my friends and such, but by the whole medical system. And if anyone is going in for chemotherapy, Listen to me carefully. It is a good way to get your treatment. What sort of experience do you have with people who try to prey on cancer victims uh, with pseudoscience, with miracle cures, with alternative medicines, that kind of thing? Oh, Brian, there's all kinds of it. All kinds of it. It's out there all over the place. And uh, I don't think we get quite the time or the opportunity to put it on SWIFT as often as we should. But uh, my next book, A Magician in the Laboratory, is going to have extensive sections on that. And I'm going to take the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, to task for some of the things where they have lacked cooperation with the public. And they have uh, they've fallen short, fallen very short, in my estimation, of their duties. And they are given billions of dollars every year. Billions of dollars, a lot of which is total wasted money. And I'm very angry about that whole thing and very disturbed over it. And uh, when my book, uh, Magician in the Laboratory, comes out, our listeners will have the chance to see my account of that. I, I'm very disturbed by it. I'm very angry. And the NIH has to answer a lot of questions. Well, 
Let's get to uh, what I mentioned before. There's a doctor in Houston named Stanislaw yeah. Brzezinski, which I'm sure you've heard of him before. Yes, I have. He runs a clinic that is, it's called the Brzezinski Clinic. And uh, what he's been doing is a, a clinical trial, a series of clinical trials on cancer patients. And uh, this procedure uh, costs thousands of dollars. It's $30,000 basically just to be seen at the Brzezinski Clinic. And going through the whole treatment can cost upwards of $100,000. And if you want to find out all about this, you can go to thehoustoncancerquack.com which is about Stanislaw Brzezinski. And hopefully we can get these people to publish the results or if they don't have any results, to stop preying on victims of cancer. Well, I suspect that they don't have any, any positive results. And, and I, I, I suspect that they don't have any results at all. And I think, this, I think this is a racket. This is an opinion. I'm not a medical person, so I can't tell you uh, definitively, not at all. But uh, what I've shared with some other doctors, people who are very, uh, very sufficiently advanced in medical science that they should know, is that they share my opinion of it. And I, I think uh, I'm particularly disturbed by the fact that you mentioned children. And this is, this is a weakness I have. Uh, I'm, I'm not proud of any of my weaknesses. I have many. One of them is that any suffering child, and I mean any distressed child, uh, crying or not crying, uh, any, any child that is, is suffering from fear or uncertainty or anxiety or pain or anything that is a genuine reason for a child to be distressed, that gets to me immediately. And when I think of the children that have gone through this clinic and have subsequently died, I'm, I'm very, very disturbed over that, and uh, I feel powerless. I really do feel powerless, and, and something should be done, but it should be publicized. This, this small effort that we're doing right now to publicize this kind of thing is, uh, I'm sure, appreciated by many persons who uh, see the value of what we're doing, but the JRF can only do so much, and... Uh, Again, my next book, my 10th, Magician in the Laboratory, will be handling a lot of this sort of thing. And I hope it makes a big fuss, a really big fuss. I'm speaking very much from the shoulder. I'm, I'm saying it uh, the way I believe it. It can, be, it can be understood by everyone. There's no fancy language in the book at all. So uh, when it comes out and will be giving adequate uh, notice of that fact. When it comes out, I think we're going to have a lot to say about this particular cancer clinics and others who are not producing any results that they have published. And, and this is, is in, in my estimation, this is my opinion now, it is a criminal action for these people to do this kind of thing and to, to make such huge amounts of my I'm, uh, I'm very dismayed by it. All right, thanks, Randy. Thank you very much, Brian. See you again very soon, I hope. The Randy Show is a production of the James Randy Educational Foundation. To learn more about how we promote science and critical thinking, go to randy.org.